you could get spin kicked in the face. But on the bright side, if you do, that is your chance to be this week's semi-viral GoFundMe. What's up everybody, I'm Finn McKenty. this is the Punk Rock NBA, and today we are going to talk about fandoms, specifically the most annoying ones. Here's how I think about it. So, have you ever had that friend that you just can't take anywhere because they have no idea how to act in public and end up being just like a total butthole to people? Embarrassing the crap out of you and maybe even making people kind of not like you? I just sharded. Well, I think that's kind of how a lot of fandoms are for bands. There's some bands where you're like, all right, this band's pretty good, but oh my God, their fans are absolutely unbearable. And it kind of ruins the music for you by proxy. So in this video, I'm gonna go over the top 10 most annoying fandoms in rock and metal, and also a couple of the cooler fandoms just to kind of balance things out and keep it positive. But before I get into that, if you haven't followed me yet on Instagram, I would love it if you do that. There's a link to that in the description. Number two, I also have some merch for everybody who has asked. I get messages about that sometimes. There's a link to that in the description as well. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. It's just music. Don't you understand? This is important to me. All right, well, let's start with an easy target. The people that absolutely nobody likes, and I actually kind of think that they don't even like themselves. The pretentious butthole elitists who act like listening to a particular band is some sort of amazing accomplishment that they should be applauded for. There's a long list of artists here that come to mind as far as this kind of fandom goes. Refused, Radiohead, At The Drive-In, Husker Du, Fugazi, and The Strokes as just a few examples. At the risk of sounding like a pretentious asshole myself, I'm just gonna be a pretentious asshole, I guess. What I find very ironic about these people is how they pat themselves on the back and think they're so like cultured and amazing for listening to like the most predictable basic stuff. Like Radiohead and The Strokes, these are like mainstream MTV bands. It's not exactly like obscure underground shit, which is fine. I don't care if people listen to obscure music and you know I listen to a lot of mainstream stuff. It just doesn't really make sense to me. It's like someone patting themselves on the back for going to Olive Garden or Cheesecake Factory. And don't get me wrong, I fucking love the Olive Garden breadsticks and salad. I could eat that all day, but I'm not gonna expect anybody to consider me an expert on fine dining because of that. So am I saying that Radiohead and The Strokes are the Olive Garden of music? Yes, that is exactly what I'm saying. I'd also put the real emo and Midwest emo types in this bucket. The kind of people who think they deserve a medal for listening to like Page 99 or Orchid or Seisha or American Football or Cap'n Jazz. And it's especially strange to me that the fandom around music that's so like low energy and mopey, kind of down, like if Bad Posture had a soundtrack, it would be this stuff. And yet the fandom around it can be so aggressive and toxic. That always struck me as kind of funny, but I guess it's kind of like when you go to a dog park, the biggest asshole dogs there are always the chihuahuas and all the other little ankle biter dogs. In this case, I guess that means the chihuahuas would be wearing sunny day real estate shirts. And that brings us to our next fandom, one that a lot of people seem to really hate. All the artists that, for lack of a better word, have that kind of like young fangirl dynamic around them. In their prime, you know, Justin Bieber or NSYNC would be great examples of this. In the rock world, Black Veil Brides, Water Parks, 21 Pilots, My Chemical Romance, Young Blood. If you were to paint a mental picture of their typical fan, it would probably be like a young girl who is, let's just say, very, very enthusiastic about the band. And do the fangirls get kind of annoying at times? Sure, of course, because everybody that age is annoying. I know when I was in like eighth or ninth grade, I was annoying as fuck. We all were, right? Which is why I think it's so like shitty and mean-spirited to be so hateful towards these girls. Remember, they're kids. Let them have their fun and squeal and shriek about their favorite bands. They're not hurting anyone. And I have to say, I think there's definitely some sexism at play here because notice these same people never get that butt hurt about what teenage boys like. That said, there are definitely some unhealthy aspects to the fangirl thing, like how they put these bands up on a pedestal and think of them as these like flawless, perfect people, which they obviously aren't. And unfortunately, the bands sometimes take advantage of that. But as far as I'm concerned, these fandoms are okay in my book. You certainly don't have to like them. It's okay to be annoyed by them, but there's no reason to be mean to them. I think that the fact that so many people in rock have been giant assholes to the fangirl crowd is probably a big part of why the genre has declined. But that's a whole other topic, which I will definitely get into in more detail in another video. You're a jerk. I know. You're a jerk. I know. And speaking of mean, we have to talk about all the fandoms that are just like straight up assholes. 
The obvious one here would be black metal. I don't think I have to convince everybody that black metal fans can be assholes. I think even black metal fans themselves would admit that. But if for some reason you don't believe me, feel free to take a look at the comments on my black metal video. There are literally thousands of examples of this. But to be fair, this really should not come as a surprise to anybody. I mean, after all, the entire genre is based on being a misanthrope who lives in a dungeon by himself and feeds on vermin that happen to wander into his lair and only ventures out to terrorize people in the nearby village and feed on their blood. But in all seriousness, as irritating as these people can be, I do actually feel bad for them because you have to ask yourself, why are they so focused on creating and enforcing these super rigid in-group versus out-group dynamics? Well, I think the more confident and secure you are in who you are and your identity, the less you feel like you have to prove that to the world. And the opposite is true too. I think these are mostly very insecure people who probably don't feel great about themselves, probably feel a little bit left out. And so they use gatekeeping as a way to make themselves feel a little bit more powerful. This is our club and you can't join it. Uh, okay. I'm actually not at all interested in being part of a club where you are a member. So that works out. Oh yeah? Well, in that case, you're banned for life. I'm not doubting your metalness or anything, but it's just it's cancer. And you'll look back at that one day and you'll be like, what the fuck was I doing? So I kind of saw that one coming, but another group of very, very, very mean and very hateful fans that I did not see coming is baby metal. Holy shit, they are brutal. I had no idea that this was the case until I made that video a few months ago about Poppy and baby metal, where I was very, very mildly critical of baby metal and pointed out the fact that they used to lip sync. And then hundreds or maybe even thousands of their fans showed up to tell me what a fucking idiot I am. I did not see that one coming at all. Although in hindsight, I probably should have. On the internet, there's a single unwritten rule. Don't fuck with K-pop fans. I mean, think about it. Their fandom is like the Venn diagram overlap of weeaboos and metal fans, two groups that are bad enough on their own and are absolute cancer when you combine them with the added yuck factor of their fans who are like older guys with ponytails who like them for, let's just say questionable reasons. So whether you like baby metal or not, my advice is avoid their fans like the plague. They are easily one of the worst fandoms I have ever encountered. Never much into hip hop, but Wu-Tang. That's that next level shit. Which brings us to what I think is probably the most irritating fandom of all to me, the Punishers. I would say that fans of Deftones, Glassjaw, System of a Down, Circus Survive, Thrice, Sleep Token, and Propagandi would all fit under this category. And I feel a little bit bad about being so irritated by these people because they're not mean or anything like that. They're actually pretty nice. They just have that diarrhea of the mouth kind of thing where they really, really, really love their favorite band and cannot stop themselves from gushing about the band at any opportunity. Like in elementary school, there's that kid that was really into some baseball baseball team and found a way to make every single assignment about them. This is my speech. It's called why the Seattle Mariners are the best baseball team and every other baseball team should have to eat their poop. And I don't know why, but this particular personality trait just annoys the living shit out of me. And you'll see this a lot outside of music too. For example, Volkswagen drivers or people who insist on only driving cars with four wheel drive or manual transmissions. And if you give them the slightest opportunity, they'll corner you and talk your fucking ear off about it. So if you're a big fan of something that's totally cool, God bless you. Just please dial it back a little bit. That's all I'm asking. You don't listen to Tool, you experience it. And of course the I am very smart types. The people who seem to think that only they with their giant galaxy brains are capable of understanding the deep, profound complexity of bands like Tool, Coheed and Cambria, Faith No More. A lot of the progressive rock fandom in general can kind of be like this. And I'm not putting any of those bands down at all. They're definitely very good musicians, but so what? For one, the fact that they use polyrhythms or whatever, or have like seven minute long songs, doesn't mean that anybody has to like it. Like that doesn't make it automatically good. Or that if they don't like it, that they're like some dumb pleb who's too dense to comprehend it. Clearly you failed to see how their entire discography is based on the Fibonacci sequence and Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. And second, remember the guys in the band might be brilliant musicians who are doing really cool, innovative things, but that doesn't mean you are just because you listen to it. You didn't write the song, you just press play on it. You do not get to take any credit for this, my man. You'll open your third eye soon enough. And speaking of prog, that brings us to the Dance Gavin Dance fandom. I've actually changed my mind about them. 
I used to think that they were just complete pain. I wanted nothing to do with this fandom. And so because of that, I refused to do a video about the band until eventually I just got so many requests for it that I just said, you know what? Fuck it, I'm gonna make a video about this band and whatever happens, happens. And I was expecting it to be a total shit show, but, but actually the reaction of the video was great, even though I was somewhat critical of them and said I didn't really like their music. But the fans took it all in stride. They're really cool about it. They had fun with it and really made me change my mind. Now, are they weird and nerdy and awkward? Yes, definitely. But there's nothing wrong with that. And they can also be very creative and funny. And another fandom along the same lines is The Main. You may remember them when they came out as a scene band, but they're a lot different now. You can think of them now as maybe like the less nerdy, more upscale brunch spot in the hipster neighborhood version of the Dance Gavin Dance fandom. I actually really love what they've done. They have that same kind of very dedicated community around them. And they've used that to create their own kind of little empire. Like Dance Gavin Dance, they've got their own label, they've got their own festival, it's called 8123 Fest. And I could be wrong, but I think I remember reading they had an actual like retail store in Arizona. It's pretty awesome. I find it super inspiring to see how people like the main and Dance Gavin Dance have carved out this really cool self-sustaining community. And I would love to do something like that with this channel. Step the fuck back. And next, the fandoms that maybe take it to the next level where you're actually worried about your physical safety when you're around them. Hatebreed, Sworn Enemy, Terror, and Madball would be the obvious examples here. But pretty much any hardcore band that's from the basketball jersey branch of the hardcore family tree would work here. And honestly, it is kind of a valid worry. It's always possible that you could get jumped by somebody in the crowd or even in the band. You could get spin kicked in the face. But on the bright side, if you do, that is your chance to be this week's semi-viral GoFundMe. <laughs> Metal bands may look scarier to the average normie and maybe have crazier imagery in their artwork and stuff, but honestly, they're kind of all bark and no bite. Whereas hardcore kids are kind of the opposite. They look pretty normal, but they can get pretty violent. But with all that being said, generally speaking, I think if you treat everyone with respect, you're gonna be fine. And actually my personal experience is that the people who are supposed to be the bad guys, the thugcore guys or whatever, were always really chill, friendly, funny people. Personally, I always found the real emo people to be the biggest assholes. And that brings us to what I like to call the boomer punks. Uh, I've been John Lydon, I've been Johnny Rotten, mm. now I'm Donut Bump. And there's a few subgroups here which range from harmless to terrifying. There's the guys who are still stuck in the 80s or 90s, like they're 51, but they still have a mohawk and a punk jacket, like it's 1981. Or their 90s equivalents who are like 46, but still wear dickies, airwalks, and black flies. These guys are really just kind of goofy, maybe at worst a little bit annoying when they tell you endless stories about how they saw social distortion in 1988 or whatever, but no big deal. There's also a very particular subgroup of these people, the guys who are maybe around 50, Orange County Dwayne Peters type dudes, whose brains are are totally fried from too many drugs and probably getting beat up too many times and tend to leave these like long, bizarre, nonsensical comments in the middle of the night when they're wasted. Usually in all caps, like, hell yeah, man, I used to party with Johnny from TSOL back in the 80s. Lost touch with him after I went to prison though. Johnny, if you're reading this, call me. I miss you, bro. And then they'll include their actual phone number in the public YouTube comment. Those guys are pretty harmless, but I do have to put out a warning about one particular type of boomer punks. The ones you really need to watch out for are the Southern California type white boys. Like if you ever see somebody who looks like this and refers to themselves as a wood, as in peckerwood. Wood. I would suggest that you get the fuck out of wherever you are immediately because these guys might look kind of goofy, but trust me, they are no joke. They love meth and guns in that order and they will fuck you up over absolutely nothing. And next up, I'm just gonna be petty here. This is one of my personal least favorite fandoms. The fans of what I call NPR rap. If you enjoy hip hop music, you must listen to this album. The kind of people who love Run the Jewels, Aesop Rock, JPEG Mafia, Kendrick, and all the other backpacky kind of stuff that you see covered in places like NPR or Vice or Brooklyn Vegan. The kind of rappers who you could imagine doing a collab with Ben and Jerry's. And to be clear, it's not at all about the artists themselves. I'm not really into this kind of stuff personally. I'm more into what Jermaine Dupri calls stripper fight music. But I completely respect it. I think of this fandom as like 
artsy white people in their 30s who drive a Subaru with a coexist sticker on it, who don't listen to or pay attention to any rap at all besides this stuff, but because they think of themselves as experts on any kind of art or music, they think that they're so fancy and cultured for listening to Run the Jewels, but turn their nose up at any other kind of rap, like a guy I used to work with who loved all this stuff, was all about rap, but had never heard of Chief Keef. And to be clear, I'm not gatekeeping if you don't know a lot about rap or any other genre, that's totally fine. Please just don't get up on your high horse because you discovered MF Doom last week. If you listen to the gent bands, all they have is just brown out, brown out, a winner. And lastly, I have to mention the gent crowd. I kind of busted on them in my last video about how periphery fans need to chill out with like the dick related comments, which they do. But I wanted to be clear that I actually like the gent fandom quite a bit. Yes, they are a little bit awkward at times, pretty much all the time, but they're actually really nice and they're definitely one of, if not the most intelligent fandoms that you'll find. Like I said in that video, there's a lot of scientists and engineers in the gent world, which I really appreciate. Like I would bet money that if you go see Periphery, there's more graduate degrees per capita in that crowd than probably any other band. And I would way, way rather have somebody tell me about their work as a software engineer than how wasted they got last night. Because when it comes to software engineering, I'm honestly still stuck in 2003. So I'm badly out of touch and I'm always grateful when people help me get up to speed. GitHub, that's for cowards. We just SSH right into the production server, fire up VI and hit save and we're done. I mean, say what you want about them, but gent kids are really never mean. They also have a really good sense of humor about themselves. I think the gent shit posting group is amazing. They're also really creative. And I would be pretty happy if all fandoms were a little bit more like the gent kids. Hi guys. All right, my friends, that does it for this video about the worst and also the best fandoms. I would love to know what you think in the comments. What fandoms are your least and most favorites and why? And also thank you to everybody on Twitter who helped me brainstorm this one. Much appreciated. Before I let you go, number one, if you haven't yet followed me on Instagram, I would love it if you would. Number two, if you haven't checked out the Punk Rock NBA podcast, there's a link to that in the description. There's a new episode every Monday. And number three, as always, I want to thank everyone who supports us on Patreon, especially those of you who support at the true cult level or above. Because of your support, we're able to do a lot of stuff with the channel, but especially the podcast. Patrons get access to every podcast a week early. There's a private Discord server that I'm in all the time. There's a way to have me review your band or YouTube channel or design or photography or portfolio, any other kind of project that you want to get my feedback on. So if that sounds cool to you, there's a link to that in the description. And with that, I'm going to sign off for now, but I will see you next time.